Today's story that I'm about to tell you today was found on Reddit and well when I was reading through this story I just couldn't believe that this was a true story. I thought to myself that what happened is just truly made up because I've never heard this before. What the investigator finds out is truly baffling but after reading this story I went off Reddit and actually searched it up on Google and sure enough this was an actual true story and at the end of the video I'd highly suggest you re-watch the video because you'll know what this person was going through and it's truly disturbing. But before we begin, if true crime stories intrigues your interest, then I highly suggest you subscribe to my YouTube channel, as that's all I do and I upload once a week. And also, if you don't mind, hitting that notification bell next to the subscribe button, so YouTube will let you know every time I upload, and you'll be the first ones to view my videos. But with all that being said, let's begin. The year is 2006 and a girl by the name of Heather Kwan was a college student who was living in a small resident town off Desert Hill in Arizona. Heather, who was a 21-year-old girl at this point, was a very kind-hearted girl and would love to go out. She would personally go out her way of making new friends and whenever she could, she would always volunteer to help people that are in need. And for a lot of her teenage life, Heather would devote her time to help underprivileged children. And well, as expected, these children would love her and they would always want to talk to her or play with her. And during this time, that she spent with the kids she decided that she wanted to help other people in other different ways so she decided to go to law school to become into a self-defense lawyer and the thought of her helping people in a professional way really intrigued her so before she moved in into a rental in Arizona where she would go to college Heather would meet a man named Ryan Waller who was 18 years old and the two would hit it off very quickly and soon become into a couple and Heather would ask Ryan do you want to live in the rental home with me and Ryan wouldn't hesitate one bit and would say yes of course I would and pretty quickly these two would be living together. Ryan was a young energetic guy who loved to goof off all the time but even though he had a playful side when things got serious Ryan would be the type of person that you would want on your side. He also had different hobbies for example he was a massive gun lover and would always love to show off his guns and his cool equipment that he used. He also was going to the same college as Heather hence why they moved in together. Anyways that year the two had plans to go visit Heather's father who was named Dawn on Christmas day and so quickly moving on to December 25th, Ryan's father Dawn will wake up nice and early and will prepare the food for the three of them and as time passed on Dawn had everything ready for the two and well once he got everything ready he would just sit down and wait for the two to come but they didn't arrive at least on time so he would wait on longer and longer and still there was no sign of Heather or Ryan. So confused he decided to call Ryan but didn't get any answer so he tried again and still didn't get an answer so now a bit frustrated and confused and also worried at the same time he would decide to call Heather but also he wouldn't get an answer from her now with this bad feeling cruising around him Dawn had a feeling that something's wrong because this is very unusual for the two and especially Ryan for him just to no show when his father works so hard to prepare a meal for them something that Ryan would never do or has ever done Dawn at first decided that he was going to go to the house which was not too far but just far Far enough to the point where Dawn decided to call the police instead and he would ask the police to do a welfare check on the two and so pretty quickly the local police would arrive at the rental home and as the two police were walking towards the rental home they got a weird feeling about the home but either way when they got to the door they knocked on the door and they waited but no answer so of course they would knock again and as one of the officers was knocking on the door the other officer would look through the window that was on the side and he could clearly see through the window that the house lights were on but even though a couple of lights were on in the house most of the house was pretty dark and there was a car in the driveway but they didn't know if it was the couple's car or the owner's car so the police kept on knocking and would shout that it's the police and we're here to do a welfare check on you but again they were met with silence and so the police would stand at the door for a couple of seconds before deciding that nobody must be home and so they would turn around to walk back to the car but as soon as they turned around they would hear a bolt unlocking on the door following that would be the door opening slowly and when the officer turned back around to see who was opening the door they admitted immediately saw that it was Ryan and Ryan had a massive bruise on his eye to be more specific the left eye and as the officer kept on looking they also noticed that his nose had a pretty large cut so the men would just stand there and stare at each other before one officer would break the silence and would ask Ryan what happened to you but Ryan wouldn't say anything the other officer at this point was looking behind Ryan to see what was inside the house and he saw pretty quickly a woman lying on the couch which the two officers automatically presumed that it was Heather because they were told that there was going to be a couple living in the house but just to be sure the officer asked him that is that Heather lying on the couch and Ryan in a quiet but dismissive way would say yeah that's her she's just sleeping and the officers would give each other a glance because Ryan seemed a bit suspect 
So they would ask him, hey Ryan, could you wake her up for us? Because we are here to do a welfare check. And to complete that welfare check, we just need to make sure that Heather's okay. And instead of complying, Ryan would get very defensive. And he would tell the officer that there's nothing wrong with her, she's just sleeping. And I don't think it's the best idea to wake her up. But after a bit more convincing, the officers would be let in by Ryan. And they would walk over to the couch and say that, yeah, that's Heather. But she's not asleep, she's deceased. And she has been for a couple of days. And the officers could quickly see that she had a gunshot wound through her head. So of course, without any hesitation they would turn around and arrest Ryan on the spot and send him to the squad car. Ryan himself would not fight the arrest but the officers could see that he seemed a bit confused and he would keep telling the officers what's going on and he would actually ask one of the officers what's wrong with Heather but the police would dismiss these questions and they would send him to the car and he would basically just sit there for a couple of hours as more and more police came along with paramedics who would arrive to process the crime. So now the time is 5 a.m December 26th. The police finally brought brought Ryan to the Phoenix police station and again bear in mind that Ryan had been in the back of a police car for a couple of hours and they would take Ryan straight away to the interrogation room where the conversation between Ryan and the officer would start relatively normal. But this conversation would not stay normal at all. While the interrogation kept on going and going, Ryan would start to make less sense and the officer would have this totally strange conversation with Ryan. But it was at the end of this interrogation where everything made sense on why Ryan was speaking so weird and making no sense. And trust me, what they found out was truly wild. It starts off with Ryan who got sent into the interrogation room at around 5.50 a.m. and also they put him into this white suit that seemed to be the police's but no one's sure that if it's theirs or if it's Ryan's but either way they just look like prison clothes and Ryan who had no shoes on which was strange and also had no cuffs on which for someone who was currently under arrest for a suspicion of murder is truly strange but either way he would sit down on the desk which was placed in the corner of the room and Ryan would just be staring in the space he was quiet not moving around and it would stay like this until Ryan noticed that there is handcuffs attached to the table which sometimes police would use against different suspects but not for Ryan but Ryan who was not told to do this would go out of his way and handcuff himself to the table which again no one told him to do this and no one would go out the way to be constrained to a table A couple of minutes later after cuffing himself to the table, Ryan would turn and face the table and then just bury his head under his arms. And during this five minute stretch, Ryan would periodically make weird groaning sounds and after would just stay silent. And after making groaning sounds, he would stay silent. He would stay silent until he would randomly burst out making groaning noises. And he would actually get up from his chair looking like he was ready to leave but of course as he's trying to leave he realizes that he's stuck he's constrained to the table and so he looks at the cuffs and he doesn't seem to be phased at the fact that he's stuck here in fact ryan looks more confused about this whole situation but he doesn't stand there for too long before he sits back down and reaches across the table for a blank piece of paper and once he got that piece of paper he would cross his legs and would just stare at this piece of paper Nine minutes later, a detective would finally walk into the interrogation room and would finally start this interrogation. And that man that was interrogating Ryan was named Dalton. And straight away as Dalton walked into the room, he would tell Ryan that, hey, we need you to put your feet up so we can take some pictures of it. And Dalton could instantly see that Ryan was confused. So he would point at the table 
and would eventually get Ryan to put his feet up. And once he put his feet up, another person with a big camera would walk into the room and would take some pictures, which all together took around about 10 minutes. And during this time of taking pictures, Ryan would constantly ask Dalton that, can I go home? Or sometimes in a more serious tone, he would say, I need to leave. And he's seemingly unaware of what horrific situation he's in. And of course, every time Ryan asked that, Dalton would say, no, you can't. And Ryan, who seemed uninterested in this whole situation, would become more frustrated every time he got told no and would actually act like a child for a bit and after 10 minutes of taking pictures and swabbing Ryan's feet the man with the camera would leave the room and Dalton would close the door behind him and then he would grab the chair and sit next to Ryan and he would introduce himself as Dalton and then he would begin to ask Ryan a couple of easy questions such as what's your name what's your date of birth and what's your social security number and well Ryan of course would answer these quite easily but then Dalton would ask him do you know why you're here and why you're being interrogated and shockingly Ryan would say no and Dalton would just stop him there because he thinks that this is some sick joke you know why you're down here Ryan you have no idea why you're down here mm -hmm. okay but before he can say anything he told Ryan that I'm going to read you your rights and at this point of the interrogation Ryan's behavior flips and becomes very weird and you can see in the video that Ryan doesn't seem to compute on what Dalton's saying and he's just seemingly staring into space and Dalton would pick up on that very quickly Ryan, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read you something so I, you can under, you understand uh, so I'm gonna read you something to make sure you understand your rights, okay? And Dalton, who thinks that maybe Ryan's scared or just shocked, so to cheer up Ryan, he would give him a light-hearted joke by saying, Hey Ryan, I'm going to read you your rights, just like how they do in the police shows, such as cops and law and order. You know them, right? And Ryan wouldn't say anything, he would just stay quiet. And Dalton would repeat, you know what I'm on about, right? And then Ryan would just straight up and say no. And Dalton, confused, would tell Ryan that. You've never seen those big shows, where they would tell you your rights. It's coming to read it. You've seen cops before, right? Ever seen a TV show Cops or CSI or anything like that? Okay. You ever seen that? No. You've never seen any kind of cop show? Lawyer show? Any kind of show? Yeah. Okay. And Ryan, instead of saying no, would become very defensive and would snap out of this robotic state that he was in and he would just say yeah yeah i've seen it and as you can probably guess just like dalton he knew that ryan was lying and it's very obvious and it wasn't really something important but this really does take into the fact that dalton can't really trust ryan if he's just gonna lie about something so something so trivial so the two went silent and then dalton would lift his head up and would look at ryan and ryan who's just looking blankly into space and dalton who would want to delve into why ryan Ryan would lie about something so small but he would tell himself to forget about it and move on so Dalton would ask Ryan hey Ryan what was the highest grade he got in school Ryan who was still looking into space wouldn't say anything and Dalton a bit more frustrated he would say it again and then Ryan would just go I don't know Dalton again confused would raise his voice and would say you don't know what your highest grade you got in school this is a strange part Ryan would panic and would say uh, uh I don't know eighth grade what's the um, highest grade you went through school I don't know. I don't know. You don't know the highest grade you went through? Eighth? Eighth grade? Yeah. And Dalton just stunned because he knew what he just said made no sense whatsoever. And of course he was still lying. And the basic trust that the two had became more weaker every time Ryan was lying. Especially again over the smallest things. Dalton, who still didn't want to ask Ryan, why are you lying about this? Would ask another question regarding to his 8th grade answer. Dalton would ask Ryan, did you get your GED? Which is a high school diploma equivalent. And it would be something that people would get if they didn't graduate high school. And obviously since 8th grade is below high school, which means Ryan... Ryan didn't finish school and so this would be a natural question to ask someone and so this is a yes or no question right well Ryan would not take this route at all in fact the answer he gave contradicts his statement and that's again strange did you do you have a GED I don't know I don't know what I don't know I don't know I just want to go home you're, you're not going to go home right now. So what? What's the highest grade that you completed? B? No. Not, not grade, as in letter grade. I'm asking 
Did you graduate high school? No. And the highest you went was eighth grade? Mm. -hmm. Yeah. Do you know how to read and write, Ryan? Yeah. After all this, Dalton knew that this conversation wasn't going anywhere and Dalton doesn't fixate on the answer that Ryan had given him. He would go on to talk about Heather and he would start it off by asking Ryan if he had a girlfriend. And Dalton knew that Heather was Ryan's girlfriend due to the fact when the police got called to do a welfare check, they were told again there would be a couple in the house. And strangely enough, Ryan would say no. I don't, which we all know is a lie, but Dalton goes along to see where this would end up on. He would follow up the question by asking, well do you know a girl who goes by the name of Heather? And this time Ryan would say yes I do, and Dalton would ask a following question saying what does she look like? And Ryan would go on to say she was a 16 to 17 year old girl, which obviously she wasn't, she was 21. And he would go on to say that her last name was Kaiman, but he would say he wasn't fully sure of that if that was the case. And he would say that she had different nicknames that she would go by, but he believed that her second name was Kaiman, but he wasn't 100% fully sure. And Dalton again knew that that wasn't the case because her last name was Quan. But again, he wouldn't question further about the answer that he was given. He would just continue to ask another question, which was, what happened to your face? You got bruising all over the left side of your face. And Ryan would say, I don't know. But Dalton this time wouldn't keep that as an answer. And he would ask Ryan, you surely must know how you got a bruise on your face. And this worked and Ryan began to open up a bit more. Do you have a girlfriend? Mm. No. You know, you know a girl named Heather. Mhm. Mm you know Heather's last name. Mhm. Mm what is Heather's last name? Um, the one that lives there right now. I guess I don't know. If her name's Heather. What's her last name? Um. I don't know which name she's trying to use as her last one. She's trying to have a real last as her nickname, so I don't know. What nickname does she go by? She probably wants the last name, Kaiman. Kaiman? How would you spell that? With a K or a C? K. Keep going. I don't know. How old is Heather? 16 or 17. You're a white girl? Yeah. How did you meet Heather? I've known her since school. Okay. I don't know. You just known her from school? She used to be a business name. I don't know. She used to be, do a business name? She used to be in my book named with business name. Oh, okay. She used to be in a class? Your business class? Mm hmm. What happened to your face? I don't know. You told the officer just a few minutes ago that someone hit you. Do you remember who hit you? Um, I don't know. I think it was Heather. Why would Heather hit you? I don't know. It was an accident. I forgot why. What was an accident? Heather's last name? No. What was an accident? Heather hitting me. What did she hit you with? Her hand and the eye. Did you guys have an argument? Not really, no. Not really? Uh-uh. What happened for her to hit you in the eye like that? She just hit me on accident. She was giving Christina a head. Everyone in the station and everyone that was working in the case fully believed that Ryan was the one who killed Heather and the bruising on his eye was from Heather trying to fight back to save her life before ultimately she would die by his hands. And so Ryan to say the mark from his face was from Heather but it was an accident. To Dalton it was the same thing as if he was admitting to killing her. Dalton would try to muster up even more answers from Ryan, mainly more specific ones about the actual physical struggle that happened between the two. But as Dalton began to ask more aggressive questions Ryan picked up on that fact and would become more defensive and he would just start to blur out any type of information. Another hitting you in the eye, right? But I don't remember after that because I just went to lay down and try to go to sleep. Alright. I don't know what anybody was doing, I really don't. Who was in the house when you went to sleep? Christina and Heather. Christina and Heather? Mm hmm. And Christina was on the couch? Heather was. Heather was on the couch? You told me Christina was on the couch just a minute ago. I don't know, man. I really don't. I really don't. You just don't know? I really don't, man. 
Or you don't want to tell me? I really don't know, man. I really don't. I just want to go and go to sleep, man. Well, Ryan, you're not going to go anywhere. Remember what happened to your nose? There's a big chunk out of your nose. I don't know. Someone grab you? Were you fighting with somebody? No, I need to go. I need to go back to sleep, man. I'm just tired, man. That's it. I didn't even do anything. I just want to go to sleep. You remember what time this happened? Your eye? Like one? Or maybe earlier? I don't know. Alicia. The girl that lives in your house. Mm -hmm. Do you know who she is? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, what about her? Do you remember what time she came home last night? Not really. Why? I'm just asking. I don't. I really don't. Okay. She said when she came home last night, your eye was already like that. Mm-hmm. Do you remember letting her in the house? I think so. Was your eye already screwed up like that? It was later in the night after she got back. At like two in the morning, I was already sleeping though. Mm-hmm. So she got back at two in the morning? Yeah, I don't know from where. Which seemed very unlikely to happen. He suggested that there were at least two or three people that were in the house on the night that Heather got killed. But of course, it was very unclear that if the people that Ryan was talking about even existed. And just overall, Ryan just seemed to be panicking and just spewing out random information. That of course made no sense whatsoever. And Dalton knew that this conversation again was leading to nowhere. And he wanted to refocus back onto the original conversation. And how did he do this, you might be asking. He would just stop Ryan and told him to his face that there's a deceased girl in your house and we need to why and Heather did this to you what your eye uh -uh. okay who did that to you Alicia Alicia did that to you now mm -hmm. I swear I'm not even lying I swear okay why would Alicia do this to you why mm -hmm. I have no idea were you mad at Alicia? No, I don't know why. I don't know why. She probably hit it on something. I don't know. She could hit what on something? I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. I just want to go to sleep, man. That's it. Hey, Ryan? Huh? Huh? There's what? a dead girl in your living room. She's dead? Yes. Heather? I don't know. I want to know what happened in your house last night. The girl on the couch is dead? I don't know. If she's on the couch, she's dead. Crazily enough, when Ryan heard that for the first time, Ryan seemed genuinely surprised, and he would go from a more confused state to a more concerned state. The main point was of all of this, he was really dialed in, as if he had never heard this before. But just as quickly as he began to become more normal, he went back to becoming bizarre. But this time, he also had a very interesting story about Heather, even though just a couple of seconds ago, he had just learned about Heather's murder. And for him just to learn a couple of seconds ago and have a full story ready made no sense. And just like all of his other answers, this story was full of contradictions and different holes, and it was just totally unbelievable. Well, these people came over, Richie and his dad with shooting arrow bow and darts. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. They hit me and her with those. That's it. And Heather wasn't there. And Eric wasn't there. It was just me and Heather. What was there? You and Heather were there. And then what happened? And that's it. Richie and his dad tried to break in to the back. Richie and Dad? His dad? Mm hmm. Who's Richie? I don't know. Well, you obviously know him. You know his name by he Richie. He used to live there. Was he a roommate of yours? He used to be. And they. They hit you and. They hit you? Yeah. Now it's Richie that hit you? Not Heather? No, Richie and his dad. Richie and his dad. They hit you? Yes. Why? Because they're trying to get their stuff. I don't know why. And they had some kind of bow and arrows? Mm-hmm. They each had two revolvers and they didn't let off any shells. Okay, you just said they had bow and arrows. 
Now they have revolvers? That's what I meant. They have revolvers. They have revolvers? Yes. And then what happened? And then they shot us with those. They shot both of you? Yeah. Where'd they shoot you at? I got shot in the eye. You I got think. shot in the eye? I think so. With a revolver? I think. I don't know, man. I don't know. Following this conversation, Ryan would say, they didn't shoot me. They shot Heather and they put me in a sleeper hold. And Dalton would ask Ryan, what's a sleeper hold? And quickly Ryan would go, oh, I don't know what a sleeper hold is. And he would just ditch the whole sleeper hold story. And he would go back to the point where Richie and his father came into the house and shot both of them. Dalton is just sitting there in awe because he doesn't believe anything that Ryan was saying. But Dalton, who was trying his best to keep along with the story. And after hearing all this, he just couldn't handle it anymore. And he would tell Ryan that this story that you're telling me makes absolute zero sense. I want you to tell me the truth. That's all I want. Richie and his dad came there. And I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why, but they put me in sleeping hold. And, like, they put me in sleeping hold with the arrows and shit. Like, I lived through the sh that crap. Okay, they, they put you in a sleeping hold? Yeah. What is that? I don't know. I don't know. I what, really what? don't. I don't know, man. You're telling me they put you in a sleeping hold. What is a sleeping hold? I don't know. Well, explain it. I I really it don't it's know. coming out of your mouth. Explain that to me. What's a sleeping hold? I really don't know, man. I really don't. I really don't know. Okay. You're telling me you're, you're all over the board here, number one. You're saying bows and arrows, you're saying revolvers, and you're saying some other thing, and they, you're saying they shot you in the eye. Okay? They shot you with a revolver in your eye. Yes. And that's Is it. Is it a BB gun? No, it was a real gun, man. It was just a if revolver. They shot you in the eye with a revolver. You wouldn't be talking to me right now. How do you know? It was most likely you'd be dead. That's what I thought too, man. I really don't know. After this, Dalton would have enough of being the nice guy and would just openly accuse Ryan of killing and shooting Heather. And Ryan would continue to say that I don't know anything. I didn't do that. And so about 5.52, so about 45 minutes into the interrogation, and Dalton again, stunned and a loss for words. And well, that's because he had no idea how to handle Ryan. Because even though Ryan knew that Dalton was the person who committed the crime, he really hasn't said anything that's incriminating enough. And well, that's because everything he said makes no sense and so Ryan begins to take a deep breath and begins to look at Ryan as he has many times in this interrogation and that's when he sees something on Ryan's face and confused he would tell Ryan to come closer because he needed to see his nose something like that I don't know man I really don't Ryan look at me Ryan yes I don't know man I really don't know why did you shoot Heather Ryan I didn't shoot Heather she was already shot once by her brother I swear Richie yes Richie shot his own sister. Yes, I swear. That's it. Sit down. Not me. And you've been shot in the eye. Yes. That's it. Put your feet off my table, please. My feet hurt, man. I don't know why. Get them off my table. Let me see your nose. Come on. Put, your, put, your legs, put your legs down. Put your legs down. Bring, bring your face closer. Oh, my head hurts. Okay. Yeah, be, be right back. Now you might be wondering what Dalton seen and I don't think you're prepared for this because this is shocking. When Dalton left the room, he discovered four bullet holes on his face and another one on his head. The crime that Ryan had committed had nothing to do with Ryan. In fact, he wasn't the one who committed it. He was a victim of this crime and somehow he survived. Going back to December 23rd, so two days before December 25th, when the couple needed to go to Ryan's father's house, there were these two men that attempted to break into Ryan and Heather's house and they 
They were 23-year-old Richie Carver and his father, 52-year-old Larry Carver. And they were the same Richie and Richie's father that Ryan had mentioned to Dalton. And why they were doing this? Well, a couple of months ago, Richie and the couple had an altercation. And during this time, Richie was actually living with Heather and Ryan. But things got awkward when Richie began to hit on Heather. And of course, Heather would tell Ryan. And as any man should, Ryan got very annoyed. And this is where Ryan and Richie would get into a massive argument, which resulted in Richie getting kicked out. Now, this whole thing from the argument to the fact that he got kicked out made Richie so embarrassed and very angry. And he knew that he needed some sort of revenge. So right away, he began to plot his big revenge. And so December 23rd came around and Richie and his father, who Richie told everything to him, and his father could not stand his son being embarrassed like that, would get to the back of Ryan at Heather's house. And Ryan would instantly see them through the glass door, which was situated in the kitchen. And the three would see each other and then they would run towards that glass door. And even though he closed the door, there was still a small gap that he couldn't muster up the energy to close it fully. But in that little gap was just big enough for Richie to reach in with his hand, which was a gun that he had in his hand. And he would shoot Ryan point blank straight in the face twice. The first shot would go through Ryan's nose and out on the side of his nose, which was the first two bullet holes that Dalton saw. And that bullet would also travel back into his head and through his left eye into his brain, where it would get lodged. Along with the bullet, six pieces of Ryan's skull broke off and they went inside of Ryan's brain as well. And that was the first three bullet holes. The second bullet that was shot into Ryan's head hit the side of his head, but it didn't go through his skull. So the bullet did not actually get stuck in the brain. But again, the pieces of Ryan's skull would break off and they would go into Ryan's brain. So that was a fourth bullet hole that Dalton saw. And when Ryan got shot, he would immediately fall to the floor unconscious. And the two attackers automatically assumed that he was dead, as if anyone would. And so they would force through the door, which was still somewhat closed, and they would step over Ryan's body and would walk straight into the living room where Heather was cowering behind a sofa. And unfortunately, Richie would walk up to Heather and shoot her straight through the head. And of course, Heather would fall straight to the floor and the two men began to steal some stuff from the house before ultimately just fleeing the scene. And thankfully, they would be caught and they would both get a life sentence. The story goes, when Heather got shot, she would instantly die. But Ryan did not. And at some point, rumour being a couple of hours later, he would wake up and of course he would have severe brain damage which made him not know what was going on when he walked into the living room he saw his girlfriend on the couch and he thought that she was sleeping so he decided to go to bed the next morning he would have woken up and had still no idea what was going on so he would spend that day just aimlessly walking around the house with his deceased girlfriend on the couch and after a full day of just aimlessly walking around he would go to bed and on christmas day so another day later he would do the exact same thing with again his deceased girlfriend on the the couch and finally when the welfare check was called upon police would show up and find Heather deceased and they would jump straight to conclusions that it was Ryan who killed Heather and this really dictated the way the police treated him because if they had known that this wasn't Ryan's doing and the fact that he was actually a victim of this they would have gotten him medical attention straight away but again they saw the bruising on his face and they thought that that was from Heather trying to save her life so they would keep him in the back of a police car where they would just sit there for a couple of hours again with no medical care and every crucial hour that was going by was severe brain damage caused to him that of course could never be reversed and he would sit there and no one would check up on him and to make it worse when he finally got to the police station instead of getting medical help he would sit there being interrogated for about another two hours even though he still got four bullet holes in his face but nobody took it serious enough or they just didn't care or they just didn't see it but regardless he would spend those two hours and the damage would be getting worse and worse and his sentences and his overall demeanor would become more confusing as the brain damage continues and then finally when dalton who of course is very confused on ryan's behavior finally decides to take a step back from trying to convict ryan to actually looking at ryan to see what was going on and that's when he would notice everything and he would call the ambulance ryan would be rushed into hospital where he would have emergency surgery and thankfully he would be saved but he would lose a lot. Not only did they have to remove a large portion of Ryan's brain, they also had to remove both of Ryan's eyes, which made him dependent on others looking after him. So he would move back into his parents, where they would look after him 24-7. And unfortunately, Ryan would die 10 years later from a seizure that was directly connected to the injuries that he got on that fateful day. The family could have pressed charges on the police for that botched job that they did, but they chose not to. All they said was, we want our son back and a lawsuit and money is not going to bring him back. So that'll be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed today's story. Comment below if this story shocked you because it certainly shocked me. But if true crime stories intrigues your interest, then I'd highly suggest you subscribe to my YouTube channel.
because that's all I do and I upload once a week. And also don't forget to hit the notification bell so YouTube lets you know every time I upload. And also I believe we hit 400 subscribers and I just want to say thank you to that. And I just can't help thanking you guys. But with all that being said, thank you for watching and yeah, goodbye.